Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. Now, most of the content on software engineering will tell you how great it is to be a software developer. You can earn a ton of money, you get to work remotely, and if you're in the office, there's free food and drink as well as pool tables and games consoles. What is there not to love about being a software developer? Well, for one, sorry to burst your bubble, but you're never gonna have time to play that PS5 that's sitting in the lunchroom. And there's actually quite a few other things that people are not telling you about a career in software development. Number one, you're never going to be an expert. There is so much to learn in software development that it's practically impossible to become an expert in anything but a very specific field. You essentially have two options. You either niche down and learn as much as you can about one particular topic while remaining relatively clueless about everything else. Or you learn as much as you can about lots of different topics and just get comfortable with the fact that you're never gonna get anywhere close to being an expert in any of them. Personally, I prefer option two. I'd much rather be a generalist that can adapt as new technologies come out rather than throw all my eggs in one basket and become good at just one thing. And the thing is, you're very likely to suffer from imposter syndrome at some point in your career. Even if you do become an expert in one particular thing, you're very likely to be acutely aware of everything that you're not good at at the same time. If you are going down the generalist route and you're trying to understand as much as you can about lots of different areas, it's important that you don't get too distracted by shiny objects. New programming languages and frameworks come out all the time, but only only a handful ever really stick around. You might never become an expert in a particular field, but if you're always switching to every new thing that comes out, you won't even get to achieve a level of proficiency that you can be proud of. Number two is that burnout is very common. With everything there is to learn in tech, it's no wonder that burnout is such a big issue. There is this constant pressure to always keep up with new technologies as they come out. For example, Microsoft is soon to release c 12, which has more syntax changes to the programming language. But it was only six months ago that c 11 came out. How many changes do they need to make to a programming language? On top of that, when you're working as a developer, there's this never ending backlog of work to complete and companies never seem to have enough developers to keep up with the amount of work that they want to do. This often results in tight deadlines and additional stress for all of the developers involved. Some industries are worse than others for this. Game development can be particularly bad, as can fast-paced startups. In some cases, burnout can be self-inflicted. I know when I look back at my career, it's often just me that's pushing myself to work harder, to learn everything I can, to prove to myself and to others that I deserve the success that I've received. Imposter syndrome is very real and it's really not healthy if you end up pushing yourself to burn out to try and overcome it. Number three is the fact that diversity is such a huge issue in software engineering. Take a look at the career websites of the top tech companies and you'll see a vast mix of ages, races and gender in the photos that they're showing. In some cases, they aren't even that subtle and we'll just have an illustration instead. However, if you're watching this, then there's a 95% chance that you're male between the ages of 18 and 35. I know this from looking at my YouTube stats, but it's also very common in the majority of tech companies as well. In nearly every tech job I've had, there's only ever been a handful of women amongst the software engineers and the majority of us have been in our 20s and 30s. And this is a massive issue. I've said it before, but software development is more about solving problems than it is about writing code. And studies have shown that the more diverse a group is, the quicker and more creative they are at solving problems. If you're not one of the 95% that usually end up watching this video, then please give me a wave in the comments. I'd love to hear about your experience in tech. If you're liking this video so far, then you might also like my weekly newsletter, The Curious Engineer, where I cover everything you need to know to succeed in a career in tech. I'll put a link in the description so you can check it out. Number four is that the social skills matter a lot more than the technical skills do. If you look at the senior engineering managers, the VP of engineering, or even the CTO, it's unlikely to be their technical skills that got them to where they are today. Most people in these positions are generalists rather than specialists. They have a broad knowledge of lots of different technologies, but they aren't necessarily an expert in any one of them. And this is what you want from someone in this position. It's unlikely that they're gonna be writing much code anyway, and you want them to have a broad understanding of the majority of the business. Equally, they need to be good communicators in order to talk to both the business and the engineers. So if you have your sights set on being the next CTO, then you need to work on your communication and social skills more than some of your technical skills. It doesn't matter how good a programmer you are, if people don't like working with you, you're not going to get very far in tech. The last thing you need to realise is that your software is never going to be perfect. If you're a perfectionist, then you may find software development incredibly hard. There are always going to be parts of your application that you're not happy with. And when you're working for a company, you need to find the right balance between quality and speed. Sometimes there'll be things you need to compromise on just to get your release out the door. You can tell yourself that you'll go back and make it better later, but the chances are you probably won't get time. On top of that, no matter how well you test your application, there's inevitably going to be some bugs in your code. It's just the nature of the game and you just need to do your best to try and avoid them. 
It's important to remember that a good product that you can release this week is much better than a perfect product that you're not going to release for another six months. If you like this video, then please hit that like button. It really helps with the algorithm and helps this video be found. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.